it's from my performance begs to be just begs you to, to, to dismiss us. I think you just kind of want someone to say, oh, "I thought you guys sucked because you were just a jokey jokers," and then you get to be like, "No, you suck because you didn't realize that it's actually awesome." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think we're as as unprofessional in front of 250,000 people as we are or were in front of 10 people when we first started playing. Like, just keep it kind of friendly. We used to be good! Now we're so plain! That took 10 million years! Just to say my real name! Back before Babylon! It's the second event, so obviously, you know, I think last year's event, you know, the lineup, the booking policy was absolutely astonishing, but there were some sort of troubles, you know. Last year, obviously, there was you know, not enough bars and toilets, which is it's really disappointing. And up until the end of today, we're all paranoid freaks walking around, hoping that uh, everything goes well. And I think we've tried our best. We've got massive bars in here, loads more toilets, you know, touch wood. Uh, it, it will go go well. Well, it's the archetypal British festival experience. Um, field day is really, um, yeah, it's not such a walk in the park. They Savvy Fab are helping spirits though. It's quite ironic that, uh, that the uh, Le Savvy Fab guy was chanting, sunshine, sunshine, and it was just a bit overcast. <laughs> and, th and then it started like blasting it down as if just <laughs> to smite him further. I like it down on the floor better. I like it down on the floor better. You can't, when you're eating the dirt, you can't fall any further. What's been good this year for festivals is that um, the festivals were all sort of booked and then we had the sort of slight rise in popularity or whatever. So we've been playing smaller stages but having them completely packed. So it's been that, like every gig, the atmosphere has just been incredible. It's been really great. Yeah, top ten as we speak. So um, how does it feel to go from that kind of, you know, that mild sort of, you know, natural progression to suddenly something that could be deemed mainstream? As far as it doesn't feel like that much has changed, you know, because kind of we're just doing the same stuff we've been doing for like a year and a half, just like slightly bigger scale or whatever. What you love, and you do, what you love, I will always be the sun and moon to you, and if you share with your heart, yeah, you give with your heart, what you share with the world is what it keeps of you. When we finished the first album, it was quite daunting having that blank canvas, you know, but. Uh, I think we're now all really excited because it feels we feel like we've started to gain a direction now for the next album. We sort of know where we're taking it, so that's that's kind of the immediate thing for us. We're all very excited about. People will always require a human contact. I think that's kind of what we're all about at the end of the day. So live music, and it's really encouraging because that's that's the real response. I happy? was very, very pleased because, partly because, yesterday we played Summer Sunday oh, yeah. and uh, I managed to royally balls up one of my songs. <laughs> um, and What's, what night, constitutes a ballsing up? Is it forgetting the words? Yes, or? forgetting yeah. the words and forgetting a lot of why you're there, um, who you are, <laughs> why we're here. Yeah. 
just the big okay. shit having, and then you having, panic yeah having having the big shit questions happen on stage in front of people and you're like i don't know what i'm doing Hold up your glasses Shout for the masses Here we go So begins the show Love for the Live is, a, is an incredible experience because everything, everything that you've done the songs you wrote, the album you recorded, the image that you decided to portray, everything about your career suddenly becomes presented, it's presentable in that half hour. How you doing? Yes, I know, I know. I like tents. Only a certain amount of people can get in. So I like the idea that it's sort of like people are restricted. So I like it when everyone's a bit getting a bit hot and sweaty. You know, just going full set, so that takes balls. I don't know. If someone thinks that takes balls, then great. But um, if you've got a voice, you might as well sing. So, <laughs> Where we are now is great because we have a really strong idea of what we're doing and, and what we want to achieve and, and so far so good. Festivals, I just think, are great. Like as opposed to you know normal venues, they've just got a, a, such a different atmosphere and a different vibe. You know. Nice. Excellent. So yeah, I, I guess you're just, as you say, drying off, uh, Rob. How, how are you feeling at the moment? I'm a little emotional, so yeah, as you said, I'm sort of hanging myself out to dry before before the big moment of going on stage and uh, rocking that crowd. Yeah, playing some rave music. Is that what the plan is? Just rave all the way? Is this, is this Gatecrasher? Yeah. What are your findings of Field Day so far? Do you get any kind of like professional rivalry what with you know running festival yourself? No, not at all. No, me and Tom like are, you know good, good mates, and um, I think what he's doing is, is brilliant. You know, I think it's the best kind of urban. Um, Urban Festival in London, easily the best lineup, wicked crowd, um, and yeah, great, great vibe. I said, I'm Eddie Cunningham! Each bag weighs exactly the same right now, okay? So you've got to eat as much as you can. At the end of it, we're going to weigh each bag. Which bag weighs the less is the winner. Do you understand? Okay, we're bringing it to your bar. Let's just see what you can win. I think I'm really excited about the village mentality area. There's a whole village fate. I mean, where's that fucking guitar? Sack racing, carrot eating, whack the rat, crockery smash, with frustrated males go and fucking smash some, <laughs> some uh, plates. With... They, they weighed the bag at the end. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's quite efficient. Well, ish. The guy that was doing it, he looked wasted. And it's got five, four. The winner of the carrot competition Woo! is Ang! Woo! Oh, yes. I fucking won, man! <laughs> I'm not even joking, I won and it was robbed by, by a girl. Most of the time you're actually just trying to have a good time and trying to, to make it a good, like a nice feeling for us on stage because we kind of discovered that if we have a good time up there, it spreads out to the audience somehow. I believe in mirrors, mirrors on the wall. Climbing up the forest, forest up the oh! We want to give people a special moment. And that's why we dress up and we trying to uh, drag people into this kind of room. I believe in mirrors, mirrors on the wall, sailing up the forest.
us it's really nice to play concert because you can really look the people in the eye and you can see that they most of them are smiling and having a good time like that. For us it's mostly about taking people somewhere where they haven't been uh, in a third dimension somewhere. There's a house across the river that alas I cannot swim In a garden of such beauty that the flowers seem to grin There's a house across the river but alas I cannot swim I live my life regretting that I never jumped in The way I see this thing, this thing that I'm doing, is that you can't, you, you will, I won't be able to carry it on if I don't enjoy it. And I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And I, but I, but I do things that make me really happy. Is it like a production line of emotions? Is, it, is that what the songwriting is? Yeah. yeah. You got it. Got it. But give me to a rambling man. Let it always be known. That I was who I am Beaten, battered and cold My children will live just to grow old But if I sit here this, this is quite a bold thing to ask But you know, what would you always do in, in, in the best world What your music to mean to people, do you think? Oh, a rave <laughs> Basically <laughs> Folk rave. Yeah, folk rave. Does it feel like quite frustrating, constraining being lumped in as like folk tronica? For, for one, it's not really an original, sort of like originating genre. It's just like a, a lazy comparison stuff. What would you hope that you are? Uh, not, not a name necessarily, but. Wonky pop nonsense, I think, you know, for me anyway. <laughs> We were shit before and we're better now. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. I enjoyed it. I think we enjoyed it. I think cool. the crowd really good at them. Because obviously it's tricking you down to say, well, kind of paradoxically, it put everyone in a good mood. <laughs> we're going to good time. Good mood. It was yeah. the aphrodisiac to uh, <laughs> last night's nonsense. So, because um, it was my birthday yesterday. So, yeah. Anti-day. Oh, sorry. Hold on. What do they look like? Are they sexy? By you, you have a mind of a mind of a wonderment I'll never, never find. I will never know. quite a big show, you know, and I think that's important as well, especially in this day and age, you know. Is that something that's purposeful? Do you practice that or is it just come alive by itself? And as the dimensions of the stage increase both laterally and depth-wise, we expand our uh, situation to fit them. What about the size of the audience? Does that help at all? We like Fan larger girls. girls. Yes. We steal most of our ideas. Yeah. You know, a good Bowie influence is like a good stiff shot in the balls. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what you're trying to say. Bowie, you could say everything that any one of us ever did was yeah, influenced by Bowie. Bowie. We love France. If you're going to have a really obvious influence, why not like a really uh, legendary, fantastic one? Right. Introduce the song. Yeah, uh, this is a song called Violent Demeanor. White knuckle alabaster, you're on a traffic island 
with a bag of birthday cards. You're searching for a flick knife in the glove box. It's a write-off. No unauthorized personnel behind these lines without ID cards. Handguns are widely available. I have a violent demeanor So tie me to a chair Till it's out of my system Till it's out of my system Down the Shanghai tunnels You know, at, at the moment I live um, on the top of a hill and um, I get most of my uh, news by carrier pigeon, you know what I mean? <laughs> now there's pennies on your eyelids White knuckle alabaster you know, I'm the, the uh, you know, the, the hermit that ends up dancing on a table in the pub, you know? Once the fuse is lit, I'm all right, but I have a problem trying to find the fuse sometimes. There you were at the start of life Looking up into your mother's eyes Now there's pennies on your eyelids Rain has been a good thing, yeah. Because we, I think we pulled it off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there were some little bits here and there around the site, but on the whole, I think it was it was a great event, and people stayed. Yeah. And yeah, the sound levels were good. I think. Yeah, I'm yeah. really ecstatic. Nowadays, you know, sometimes bands are over before their debut single comes out, at least within like the media. So um, I think as long as you're realistic about it and a little bit optimistic, and 
equal optimism and pessimism and you're, you're doing it for the right reasons. That's what the artists that feel they seem to be doing, I think. You know, they're not here to sell a million records and to get a top 10 single. They want, they make music because they love it. and upwards and there's still, we'll have debrief and we'll talk about how we can make it better now but I think the, most of the stuff's nailed and I, yeah I feel confident that we can make it even better and grow it and all the artists have had a great time just saw Yanis from Foles and he gave me a big hug. Yeah.